just um okay it should be back on now okay mm -hmm. okay okay Next we have the spinach, and then the mushroom, and then we can shortly, we can slice up the chicken and add it in, and then add our um, seasoning. Um, oops. I am going to add some garlic hi satan is our cousin oh, satan is our cousin <laughs> welcome to cook for fun tv and please let us know what country you're tuning in from yeah the flags on the sides represent countries that viewers have tuned in from since our show started in december so welcome and we're just um we're finishing off our stir fry We've got zucchini. Those are very large slices. <laughs> I wanted to, I wanted to maintain the, the shape. I didn't want to cut them up into like cubes or anything. Hmm. I'm missing part of my garlic press that I just took out. I have. I don't have the, the part. It was. It was around here, and then it, it migrated to somewhere. Oh, that's Winston barking. Hmm. Hmm. Okay. Think, think. Where did it go? Oh, you're from Italy. Oh, it was right in here the whole time. We were just talking about um, the difference between zucchini and courgettes, and Almira filled us in that um, zucchini is Italian and courgette is French, um, but they mean the same thing. Yeah. So how's it going? I'll, I'll just call you, um, I'm going to call you Satanus, okay? <laughs> if you don't mind me um, saying your name with my, my accent, Satanus. <laughs> I'm just adding some aromatics. So we have to be careful not to burn the garlic. So I didn't add it in, um, at the beginning. I sort of put it in midway through. Um, it's so easy to burn garlic. <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thanks, Death Vader. I don't know why the internet skipped out like that, but I'm glad that we're back. Okay. So let's turn these zucchinis around. Ooh. Got a bit of a bit of color. That's nice. It might be time to add a bit more oil to the pan, especially since we've got some of the aromatics or the garlic on. The oil will help to release the flavors of the garlic. So, yeah. Okay. This one right in the middle. So I've lowered it to a lower heat and we have our recycled canola oil. I'm gonna drizzle it in between. I'd like to use it up, then I can sort of work with fresh oil um, after that. Okay, that's Winston sneezing. Bless you, bless you. Okay, I'm gonna cut up Ginger. That's quite a bit of ginger. We like we like our aromatics. I'm just cutting off the peel. I wonder if you can see Winston. You might see him in the corner there. <laughs> Winston. Winston. Yeah. He's looking. Are you hungry, Winston? Oh, he's being a good boy. He knows I'm talking to him. <laughs> Yeah, you can see a bit of him. There's Winston. His head is showing up in the corner. 
Okay, let me get you some dog food from the fridge. He's on a raw diet. Okay, here you go. Eat there so people can see you. Oh, you can see his bum. <laughs> Winston's bum bum. <laughs> so it's not a fine mince. I'm going to just uh, dice it up as small as I can. I do like the taste of ginger. And ginger's healthy. It's just got this nice kick to it. This is quite a bit. Um, but it's, it tastes good. So you can use less. I, I'm not following a recipe for this. I'm sort of, I uh, actually might not even use all this ginger. It's quite a bit. But let's see how we go once it's all cut up. Oh, gin, uh, Winston's back and he's eating. Yep, you can, okay, I'm covering him <laughs> with my hands. He hears his name, so he keeps walking back. He thinks he might get a different treat. Okay. Let's put some ginger in. Yeah. Um, I'll put it all, why not? Because it's easier than dealing with leftovers. Yeah, okay. I usually scoop it into the um, pan. Okay. So I'm just going to... Roughly cut up this spinach. Some more. I've got a bit of lettuce as well from my parents' garden. Here, okay. We're almost here. We're almost finished the stir fry. Before I put the spinach in, I'm gonna give the mix a stir. Okay. And spinach shrinks. Um, <laughs> this isn't the best cutting job. <laughs> sort of crampy here. Okay. Okay, I'll just, it's good. They're cooked. I don't like my zucchini overcooked or soggy. I like a bit of a crunch to it. Same with bell pepper. I like a bit of a crunch. I don't like overcooked bell pepper. Okay. Okay. Gonna add our Add the stems first. Now I'm gonna turn up the heat to medium, maybe medium high. Okay, almost done. Yeah. Pulling out the stems, putting them into the pan, okay. I learned so much today on today's show. I didn't know that Morocco was a was very active in the pottery industry. <laughs> Ooh, I'm getting a text from Mr. Kukurupan saying, my parents are hungry. <laughs> I did tell them that the estimated time was 1 or 1.30 <laughs> for the food. <laughs> so I told them uh, they can start without us, but they're waiting for the spoof. <laughs> but we're getting close to the finish line. It's looking good. I raised the heat, so it should cook fast. Okay, I'm just gonna put the spinach right in there. Right in there. And I'm gonna slice up the chicken. Okay, let's hope. I'm, I'm pretty sure the chicken's cooked. I just feel, I have a good feeling about it. Okay, I'll just sort of leave it there and give it, um, give it a stir in a, in a little bit. I'm going to start slicing the chicken. Okay, let's hope for, okay, let's hope for cooked chicken. Use my hands, okay. I guess I could, yeah, I just use my hands. It's, it's no longer hot. Yep. So far, it's cooked. <laughs> we haven't reached the center. And it's firm, it's definitely firm. So 
So after I finish cutting this chicken breast, I'm going to give the spinach a stir. Hmm. Okay, the front of our the front of our uh, the front of the camera is clear, so I can get ready to plate. Yep. Yeah? So we're cooked inside. All right, and I do see juices, so that's good. Yeah, it's. Ooh, I'm gonna. I'm gonna sue me. I'm gonna. I'm gonna try this. See how tender it is, because I'm always worried about dried chicken breast. Mmm. It's tender. <laughs> okay. I'll finish eating this after. Mm. And I hear the stir fry going, so I'll quickly slice this up. So point the blade downwards, it's safer. All right, okay. Give my hands a little wipe, and I'm going to give the vegetables a stir. Okay. The spinach is shrinks. Oh, mushrooms. Okay. Let me put that those mushrooms in. It's these enoki mushrooms. Yep. Just cut the ends off <laughs> with a chicken knife. I'm not too worried about eating the ends. It's just some of the guests might find it not uh, pretty. <laughs> like I eat mushroom stumps. I'm okay with that. But let's just cut those off. Okay. I'm going to lower it. I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. I should turn it right off. It will cook in its remaining heat. So these are enoki mushrooms. When the demonstrator was cooking with it at the supermarket. I just couldn't resist. So I grabbed a couple <laughs> and added it to my cart. Sometimes when somebody smiles at you, it <laughs> it's very, it just makes your day and <laughs> so. All right, give that a mix. And I can definitely smell the garlic and the ginger. We are going to add a bit of soy sauce to it and a bit of um, the vinegar, some rice vinegar. Or you can use apple cider vinegar, just so like a light neutral vinegar to brighten the flavor. Okay, I'm going to let the mushrooms sort of shrivel up and cook a bit. Okay. Okay. Maybe I'll just put the lotus root while we're here. Um, let the mushrooms soak up that flavor. Hey, hey Gailey Gal, how's it going? I know, I think with the vodcast, people get confused about, oh, when we go live and, um, yeah, it's really changed things on Twitch, having the vodcast. Um, okay. Okay, so we have one, we have another chicken breast here. I don't need to move the... How's it going, Gailey Gal? I, I, saw on t I saw on Twitter that you streamed a couple of days ago. I missed it. I only saw the tweet this morning, so I would have logged on then. Oh, thank you, Gailey Gal. So um, to the top of your screen, there's schnitzel done two ways. There, it's baked schnitzel, actually. Never done that before. But I have relatives visiting and um, like they're quite health conscious so I thought they might prefer a baked version rather than a fried version. And we have it done two ways. We have the regular method using all purpose flour, egg wash and breading or bread crumbs, seasoned bread crumbs with salt, pepper and I put garlic powder, onion powder and parsley and paprika for fun. And we have a ketone version for my husband. He doesn't do bread anymore. Only 20 grams of carbs per day. So 
He's got flaxseed meal and egg and coconut coconut flakes and a bit of almond powder in his. So, yeah, a bit of variety. Okay. So the stir fry is pretty much done. And I featured lotus root because I wanted, I thought it's different. I, and I really like the shape of lotus root. I just love, ooh, we've got some chicken juice on the plate. Let's not waste that. So that goes straight in there, yum. Okay, chicken juice. Oh, okay, I'm missing some of the chat. You just woke up, you're doing good. I've been well. I was sick, so I missed a stream, and um, in my last stream, when I tried to stream after my recovery, I was, my voice was like, you can hear it in my last two streams ago, my voice sounds so bad, um, yeah, <laughs> like it's a deeper voice, and I had to stop to cough, thanks so much for the follow, oh, uh, Zortex2017. <laughs> This is your new account because, yeah. okay, yes, the Slovenia flag is there. <laughs> yes, yeah, so um, the reason you didn't see it last time was we had a problem with this computer. Then we had to use my husband's work computer and it wasn't set up with anything. No, no special display. I couldn't even toggle between the webcam and the main cam. So it was, it was so awkward. And then um, I was like, and then the last stream, this computer didn't work again, and I was like telling Mr. Cook, if, if we're having problems again, I want to put all of the displays on your work computer because it's just not the same if people's flags aren't up there. So, yeah, we have it up there. Yeah. Okay, I think the stir fry is done. Yes, yeah, so let's, let's do some plating and sampling. All right, so we're moving it to... Uh, oh, no, sorry, sorry, hold that thought. We gotta put some seasoning to it. So I'm gonna crank up the heat again. Medium, high. Sorry, I, um, <laughs> I have to add a bit of soy sauce. And I'm going to add dark soy sauce. The reason is the chicken is seasoned with quite a bit of salt. So the sodium content is pretty, it's already there. And I, I like the color of dark soy sauce. It's just, um, I don't know why it's called dark soy sauce, why it's darker than the other soy sauce, but it does have a bit of mushroom in it. So soy sauce is a fermented sauce. It's made of fermented soybean. It pretty much tastes like a salty seasoning mix. Um, so don't get intimidated by the word, the fact that it's fermented. And it just has a deep, earthier flavor, but it's very, it works with a lot of foods. So it's good to have in your kitchen. And I'm going to do, I'm gonna measure this out because soy sauce could be strong. So I'm gonna put one um, tablespoon. Okay, one tablespoon, and that should be good. One tablespoon, okay. See how dark that is? It's almost black. Um, and I like it because I like when the color changes, I think, it just looks richer when it's nice and dark. I was telling people before about the difference between chicken gravy and beef gravy, and um, they're both delicious, but just having that dark r color for the beef gravy is better. <laughs> it just looks so well, it just looks better. And I'm gonna add a bit of vinegar. I've actually never tried adding vinegar to stir fry, but I watched a YouTube video and the chef added rice vinegar. And he said it was to brighten the flavor, um, like by adding that acidity to it. So let's give that a try, just one tablespoon. And a little bit of sesame oil. I said uh, soy sauce, yes, not, sorry, soy seasoning. Yeah, soy sauce, yeah. And just um, half a tablespoon of sesame oil. Um, if you don't have sesame oil, no sweat. Um, it's actually pretty flavorful already. Okay, so 
Let me give this a quick stir. I'll turn off the heat now. Okay. Okay. So everything just turned really dark with the dark soy sauce. Okay. Okay, so that's good. So we're ready to plate. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to switch it over to the front. You were missing us, yes. So I was sick one week <laughs> and I was out of town for the Canada Day, um, Canada's Day, which was July 1st, Canada's 150th birthday. And um, my husband and I went to my parents, uh, uh, his parents' home, which is in Northern Ontario, six hour drive from here. And, and there was a very little internet connection there. Um, I, we went to a campsite. We stayed at his parents' place overnight, but we went to the campsite during the day. Uh, so we couldn't stream um, there. Um, and then we came back on the Monday, July 3rd. I did a bit of streaming. I did a sports stream to feature slacklining. The video's choppy because we did it at my parents' place and we did it in the backyard. So we were picking up the signal from the indoors when we were outside. So, but you can check it out. So yeah, but it's really great to be back. When am I cooking Slovenian food? Okay. Okay. I'll, I'll let you know. You sent me a link and I remember um, that potato dish that you were uh, mentioning. Um, and there's lots of lamb and cabbage dishes. So I was just talking to another streamer this or viewer this morning that lamb is pretty expensive here. But when I come across it, I'll make something that's Slovenian. Um, but I'd probably do something that's potato related pretty soon. And Gaily Gal has a question about lotus root. Okay. Okay. So how does it taste like? It's very... I'm going to say it tastes like yucca or cassava, although I've never tasted those before. The reason I say that is it's a root vegetable. It's got these fiber strands, almost like celery. So when you bite in it, like you can see the strands and that's why I cut it up. And you can even see something pull away. That's not a strand, but it kind of looks like it could be like fuzz or something that just pulls away. Um, kind of like a cheese string, but not quite as thick as cheese strings. And it's crunchy. Um, not crunchy like carrot though. It still retains a bit of uh, moisture. <laughs> um, hmm. I almost described it like coconut too. When you bite into a raw coconut, it's got that texture. And when you bite into it, some juices expel into your mouth. So that's kind of what the lotus root tastes like. Even though I've cooked it, it's got that similarity. You bite into it and some of the juice comes out, but I guess not so much when it's cooked, overcooked. Um, yeah, and it just has a really fresh taste when there's no seasoning. If that, if that helps, kind of like a, kind of like daikon, kind of like daikon. If you eat that raw, you just have a burst of, water come out or liquid or the vegetable juice coming into your mouth uh, yeah hey i'm joking how's it going <laughs> welcome back it's been a while <laughs> okay so i'm going to get our cake stand for plating and our plates our our green plates for plating okay <laughs> Gonna get our plate. I'm gonna put a bit of stir fry on it, a bit of schnitzel on it. Yeah, and we have to cut up some um, lemons. So before we forget that, let me have a lemon. I mean, I could, you can see what I'm doing. So let me put the webcam back on. Ah, okay. So can't see too much about that. So let me clean this. It's pretty. Messy back here. Okay, so we're gonna cut lemon wedges. 
because lemon on schnitz schnitzel goes really, really well. Okay, <laughs> you might get some chicken juice on it. Just quarter them, quarter each half, so I guess that's eighth it, if that's a word. <laughs> For now that's definitely enough for the show all these little lemon wedges okay so we've got some lemon wedges let me get a plate okay i do small plate because i don't like to eat, do a lot of eating on stream so i'm gonna pick up a bit of enoki mushroom i love enoki mushroom it's just They're, they're just really cute. <laughs> and spinach. Oh, the zucchini got soggy, which I try to avoid, but it happens. And the lotus roots, I was commenting on how they look like hearts. So there's a heart. Okay. Okay. And then some chicken. I'll have to take a picture of this too and not forget before um, I dig in. And some schnitzel. Okay. Look at the smallest piece. I'm going to cut it up. I'm going to cut it up. Oh, the Miraclay's cake. I have it. Oh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry about that. Okay. Okay, I have to mark it down so I don't forget. Yeah, we were talking about that when I made the, the chocolate cake with the roses. That was so long ago. And then I got sick. Yeah, and the stream after that. Was I sick during that stream? Like, yeah, so I will, I will look at that because I'm trying to improve my cake making skills. Yeah. So yeah, um, Gaily Gal, Mr. Cooker Fun is on a ketone diet, and so he has his own version of the um, the schnitzel. Well, this is this doesn't look very generous. I better put more on. <laughs> okay. okay, I'll put the rest of it on. Okay, it's not that. I guess I have to pile it higher with more vegetables. It looks pretty insignificant. <laughs> okay. Put more green on it. And the heart can go on top, so I have to plate it a bit better. <laughs> I notice in fine dining, all the portions are so small, and I like, I like lots of food on my plate. <laughs> I like it when restaurant. Like I, I like the lower end stuff, you know, where you get lots of noodles. <laughs> lots of everything and in fine dining when there's so many courses and each course is each dish is so tiny it's just it's not fun to eat it feels like you can't i don't know it just doesn't feel the same when when the portions are small <laughs> put more chicken too i won't eat it all on stream i just won't be able to but i should definitely show more okay so I think that's a better portion. Okay, so let's go to the front and the lemon wedge goes right beside the uh, schnitzel. Should I try my husband's uh, schnitzel? Okay, yeah, I'll try a piece of his. Like he's limited. Okay, I'll try the small piece. So his is made with flaxseed meal in in place of flour and coconut coconut flakes in place of breadcrumbs, which sounds really good. It's just um, it's an experiment each time when I make something for him because never tried it before, and they're not commonly used ingredients in this kitchen. So, but yeah, okay, take a photo. And I know I'm behind in the chat. 
I'm gonna put Winston's food in the fridge. He didn't need it. He's really picky. Oh, okay. All right. So take a photo. And Os Schnitzel is from Osterich. I was told, I don't know if it's a city from there, but I was told that um, by a German viewer that Schnitzel is actually not German, it's from Austria. Yeah, is that the same thing? Um, Osterich, Osterich, yeah. Okay, take the photo close up. Take one of you guys, so smile for the camera. You're in the photo. I'll actually move it closer because there's a big gap. Okay, say cheese or say schnitzel or say stir fry. All right, okay, and fork. <laughs> I already cut things up, so that helps. Okay, I'm gonna have some water. I haven't had any water since we started. Okay. Oh, awesome. Okay, I got awesome. Um, that does mean Austria. Awesome. <laughs> Thanks, Gaily gal. Yeah, so the cake was made in a rice cooker and we put strawberry roses on top. So this is a past vodcast that Gaily Gal is talking about. And to be honest, a cake is pretty boring. Like when you don't put any decorations on it, it's pretty boring. It's this baked piece of carb. <laughs> and um, once you decorate it, it just suddenly looks good. <laughs> so. <laughs> I'm getting more into that because it's like a magic trick. Um, and then people think it tastes good. It could just be a really normal cake, but because it looks good, it's got to taste good. So, <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. <laughs> great. I'm glad you guys are smiling. City name is Vienna. Okay, great. Oh, the flightless bird. <laughs> Ostrich. <laughs> okay, so it's time to taste it. All right, so um, I'm going to go with the uh, stir fry because it's still warm. The schnitzel has been cooling down for a really, really long time. I'm going to have one piece of the chicken breast. I don't usually work with chicken breast because it's so easy to overcook. <laughs> mm. So it's good. And it's juicy. I, what we did with the chicken breast to get it to brown rather than cook in its own juices and boil, which I always do, <laughs> until I learned it how to do it the right way, is to firstly pat it dry, okay? Pat it dry and then add salt to it. Let it sit and pat it dry again because salt helps to release more uh, moisture. The salt tends to just suck out moisture. And then um, pat it dry again to get it like, as dry as possible then add your um, black pepper. So you've already, you don't have to add any more salt because both sides of the uh, chicken is salted. You'll get the salted taste and I definitely taste the salt in it, but it's not overpowering because the chicken is thick. So it's just the surface that's been salted. And you fry it and it took a while to fry. I think we must've spent 15 minutes on each side I actually checked it by cutting a slice in it and I was told don't do that, just cook it low and slow. I first had it on medium heat to get a nice brown on each side, but I, then I turned it down to a low so that the center could cook properly. So now I learned how to get to the chicken breast to actually brown without cooking in its own juices. So the trick is to dry it first with paper towel and then salt. Yeah. <laughs> You should start cooking, Gaily Gal. I think it's. I think you're in. I think your time zone. So I'm in Eastern Standard Time Zone. I think you're Pacific 
if I'm not wrong. I know your time's a little bit later than mine, so you're heading towards lunch not too long. So yeah, and let us know what you're going to cook. Hi, Wizzo, how's it going? <laughs> you're just in time for our sampling. Uh, Wiener schnitzel. Yeah, apparently Wiener schnitzel refers to pork and original schnitzel refers to veal meat. Hmm. <laughs> and Lord Nikon, you're not the only one who's hungry. My, my father um, came by. We live on the same street. My parents live on the same street as us and he came by approximately 25 minutes ago to say that he's hungry <laughs> and my my husband had to sort of um, stall for me to say that you know it's almost ready <laughs> ah cst okay you're, you're cooking offline yeah i mean when you um stream it it involves more <laughs> It just takes longer because it's because of all the fun chatting. <laughs> so I posted on Twitter a picture of breakfast this morning. I, I made an omelet using leftover pork hash that I made. And um, it was pretty good. Yeah, it's like to just uh, mix your leftover right into your, your omelet. And I took a picture of it. And Mr. Cook for Fun has often mentioned that I should stream breakfast, but breakfast is cooked quickly. Like um, the eggs, they they cook in no time, and I just feel like I'm going to burn something. <laughs> um, yeah, so I haven't done that because um, I often have my back to the to the stove when I'm chatting, and so I haven't done it. But maybe one day when I'll just discipline myself. Okay, like concentrate and then <laughs> watch the heat. <laughs> So, question from Zortex. I stream every Sunday at 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time Zone. Um, I don't do daily streams. I'd love to, but uh, I, I can't with work and stuff. So, so I'm sorry if, not, if that's not the answer you wanted to hear. When I first started streaming in December, we were on winter holiday and there was like wind coming in. Um, and I streamed maybe four days in a row because I just started and I, ha I was on holiday. So I had every, I had two full weeks off. So that was, that was really nice. Um, but yeah, so until I, the next time I have all those days off, I will do more streaming. Hmm. Okay. Five. And you're awake. Hi there, the Dunzer. Thanks so much for your follow. You're in time for our sampling. And let us know what country you're tuning in from as we like to um, showcase um, where the community is um, tuning in from. And we're making, we cook schnitzel, which is an Austrian dish, but it's often mistaken for being German. I wouldn't say mistaken because I'm sure um, 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 it's been like, done in different versions there as well so so it's it's commonly known as a german dish too and we have a stir fry which is i guess it's asian but i got the youtube video um and from uh i guess somebody to um broadcasting from north america and the ingredients are not asian in that stir fry so that's an example of cross-cultural cooking yeah but i added lotus root to it too Mm -hmm. <laughs> wow, I'm getting a request for a stream on Tuesday or Friday. <laughs> That's my phone. That's my parents. They're hungry. I'm going to have to stall. <laughs> That's my parents. <laughs> okay, let me answer. Mm -hmm. Hi, Mom. Um, if you if you turn on the internet, you can see that um, we are sampling the food and and just about to come over. So please um, um, be patient. <laughs> there will be food coming your way. Lots and lots of, of schnitzel. What, what time you finish Oh well, I'm finishing shortly. Yes. So just um, 
Oh, I thought you figured it's a twelve o'clock. No. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yes. Um. So you can watch. Yeah. Didn't Corey tell you? He came. You when you came over. Okay. Okay. So. Bye. Well, I'll come over shortly. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hi there. <laughs> Maybe I should have muted that. Feed us. <laughs> oh, you're eating some of your lima beans. So how long have you been slow cooking that? Has that been slow cooking overnight sausage? Okay, I think I'm behind. <laughs> they are starving. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> okay, let me... <laughs> Continue feeding. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna finish off this chicken. <laughs> it's pretty weird to be like eating <laughs> on camera. It's, yeah. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. I'm looking at Wolfie Hound's message. Sixteen hours slow cooking. <laughs> I haven't heard of that sausage, Wolfie Hound. I'll look that up. Hmm. But I love sausages. I'm a fan of sausages. My husband knows that. Yeah, I love sausages. I just like how you can make them crispy on the outside where the casing is. And then the inside is, is seasoned uh, meat. Okay. I'm having enoki mushroom. And it looks like it's pretty seasoned with soy sauce vinegar and the sesame oil. I can't see the seasoning, but that's what we have in the stir fry. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm. I love enoki mushroom. It tastes like mushroom, but it's it's got a crunch to it. Not like a carrot crunch. It's just well, kind of a crunch. How would you describe I guess like a mushroom crunch. Just imagine the, the stumps of a mushroom and that kind of crunchy. It's slightly harder than the, the heads of the mushroom. Yeah, sausages are great. <laughs> oh, is there something different about um, my the flags? Yeah, the Slovakian flag is there. Yeah, Slovenians. Oh, okay, got it. There's a difference between the Slovakian flag and this... Um, Slovenian flag. Yes, because we had a viewer from Slovakia as well. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying spinach. Um, it doesn't have a very, it's a very neutral tasting uh, green vegetable, the spinach, but it's healthy. <laughs> Hangry. Mmm. <laughs> mm. Well, um, spinach does have a distinct taste. It's, it's a little bit more, it's nice. It's got, yeah, yeah, spinach just tastes like spinach. <laughs> it's definitely um, got more flavor than lettuce. Because um, when I bit into it, I thought a little bit of bitterness. Yeah, but not like bitter, just got more taste than lettuce and a zucchini. So I mentioned that for the seasoning, I put in soy sauce, vinegar, like rice vinegar and sesame oil, but I really don't taste the vinegar too much. Maybe it's there, but it's kind of in the background. <laughs> um, and I noted that like, I don't, I never put that in um, my stir fry. So that's sort of something I picked up from the YouTube video I posted. Um, yeah. So I don't think you need to have vinegar in it. Soy sauce will work. And I also have a sesame oil. Um, I didn't use a lot, so I think you can omit that. But sesame oil gives it a nice nutty flavor. If uh, there was mention of somebody using peanut oil, and sometimes people use peanut oil to substitute for sesame oil. It's just a nutty oil, not a strong taste. Just imagine an oil infused with a nutty flavor and you don't use a lot of it. Um, it's just there, so I could skip that. And just you keep it simple with soy sauce. I think I taste the garlic and the ginger because I put quite a bit of that, around four cloves of garlic. And 
one centimeter thick of uh, ginger all diced up. So that's good. Mm hmm. Okay, that's the iron taste for the spinach. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's the iron taste. It's good. Yeah, Papa eats it. <laughs> Papa the Sailor Man, the cartoon. <laughs> Your message got flagged. Uh oh. <laughs> I'm sure your intentions were good. Yeah, the filter is sensitive. <laughs> hey, username, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. And you're just in time. I'm gonna bite into this lotus root. That actually looks almost like a heart shape. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mmm. I buy sausages from the grocery store. It's cheaper. There's one grocery store that has good sausages, but I do like it from the butcher too. I like to buy, I like to buy jerk sausage, like the sausages from other cultures. As it's just more, it's just something you can't get from the supermarket. Supermarket is just more basic, like pork sausage. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, Popeye. <laughs> and his girlfriend's name is Olive Oil. <laughs> My mom listened to Popeye on the radio. <laughs> ah, there are rare butcher shops here. Hmm. I really like the taste of lotus root. It's kind of like eating coconut, but it's not sweet like coconut. It's just the texture, that that crunch with the with the juice coming out. <laughs> I wouldn't say it's juicy, but it's just you crunch it and it just tastes so fresh. Almost almost like eating daikon or radish that you bite into it and it's just got this really fresh taste. We have sausage day at one person's house. Wow, so somebody's got a sausage maker. I don't have one and I thought about it, but it's easy, but I would have to find the sausage casing and like I wasn't sure if, yeah, I'll probably end up getting one at some point, <laughs> but um, I sort of have to in, uh, know of a supplier I can go to regularly to get it to make it. It just seems like in order to make it, I have to go out and find the casings because I can't buy it at the supermarket. I can buy the meat and the seasoning there, but then the casings, it's like, but apparently they come dry and, and they they last for a long time, so so that's good. So maybe I will you'll eventually see sausage making on the stream. <laughs> but it does sound fun to put what you want in it. I like cheese in my sausage. I like mushroom in it, but I also like just pork and meat and seasoning in it too. But when you can put what you want, um, yeah, you can do. Like you can do barbacoa sausage, jerk sausage, um, <laughs> any type of sausage. Just stuff what you want in it. It's, it's almost like dumpling. Just put what you want in it. And the casing is the casing rather than um, a dumpling wrapper. Hmm. Thanks, username. Uh, I'm good and so is uh, Mr. Cook for fun. Yeah, we actually, I was showing earlier on the stream, if some of you are newly tuned in, we bought a food dehydrator yesterday off Kijiji for $80 second hand and it actually works. We put uh, um, pineapple slices in it, some mango strips, and some strawberries so yeah we're having fun <laughs> we're having fun some strawberry yeah mm -hmm. so and we also went we also picked cherries from our cherry tree that was fun my husband bought this long it's called a power stroke it's this scissors on a long stick to cut the cherries off <laughs> it was quite fun to watch Wow, 10 to 20 people showed up. That's fun. And then uh, do you, you all, you're all lining up to use the sausage machine. But that sounds like a lot of fun. And then 
You get to share and exchange sausages. So you come back with 20 types of sausages. <laughs> Wild pig. Hmm. Mmm. Apple and cheese. Mmm. Apple and cheese is a really good combination. I can just imagine it with the pork. I like fruit with meat. I just discovered that when I made that Persian um, walnut chicken dish, a uh, pheasant jam, that, that fruit and um, meat go well together. That sounds really yummy. <laughs> pork and watercress. Watercress is really good. Yeah. Um, I have, sometimes I eat pork and watercress dumpling. Ginger in your sauce. You like ginger a lot. You like it in your omelet as well. That sounds good. Yeah, ginger's really healthy. Mmm. Ginger and rice casing. I know my parents are starving. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> but I did tell them the time that I would be done. I said um, during 1 to 1... 30, I guess we're like 135. It's not that off, but my dad mistakenly thought I said 12. <laughs> I told him, just watch, just turn, just log on to the internet and, and you'll see, and then you'll know. And I told them, eat a big breakfast or start. <laughs> hmm. How does the food dehydrator work? So my brother-in-law actually said that you can use the oven. It's just low heat for a long time, except that dehydrators are more energy efficient. That's all. Um, because the food dehydrator was on overnight, it was actually on from 7 p.m. until 7 this morning for 12 hours. Um, yeah. And then I think the, the air circulates it. So you don't have to flip them over. Um, but I'll probably learn more about the science behind it as I go. This was a trial. The reason I got inspired to get a dehydrator was that one of my good friends, when I came over to visit her, let me try some of her dried um, pineapple. She said, this is really good. You have to try it. it. It was, and I let my husband try it. He's a fan of pineapple. And we and then let my mom try some and we were like, this is so good. So I posted on Kijiji for a, a used one and somebody replied. So um, I think I got a decent deal. It's um, this is an Excalibur food dehydrator Excalibur. It's supposed to be one of like a top brand in the US and it's regularly one hundred fifty dollars, but I got it for 80. So because secondhand stuff, you can sort of yeah negotiate and I'm glad it works <laughs> there's no way you can test it out because you can't you can't test it out overnight at someone's home so it works so that's the good part yeah cherry tree and I'm sorry I know I'm replying to your comments so late yeah we have a cherry tree in the front and um they're not ripe but they're they're all reddish and we're starting to harvest them because I think they'll ripen on the countertop and we want to harvest more because if we wait till they're ripe I think a lot of them will start dying and we just won't be able to eat them all so at least we can start giving them away and we want to make a fruit leather we want to boil them down strain out the seeds if that's possible I don't know if that's possible but there's so many seeds and and boil it down, strain out the seeds, add some like, like sugar and flavors to it and pour it onto parchment paper and make like a fruit leather. That's what they call it. So yeah, well, we might try that. Sorcery. <laughs> yeah, you like that word, Lord Nikon, sorcery. <laughs> Yeah, my parents are probably watching. They don't have an account, so <laughs> they're not saying anything. <laughs> but they can easily set one up. Okay, I'm moving on to the schnitzel. Okay, so this was baked. It wasn't fried. So schnitzel is usually fried in um, in a, um, I guess, a shallow amount of oil. So this was baked, the healthier version. So I'm usually not really a stickler for 
um, you know, eating healthy. I'm sort of like eat everything in moderation and I've done lots of deep frying on the channel, but um, I think my relatives might be judgmental, like <laughs> who are, who have come over to visit and <laughs> I want to avoid the lecture. <laughs> so, and also I'm curious too, to try this baked version because I watched another cooking streamers um, stream and he made these chicken fingers in the oven. He baked them um, and he said they're really good. And so I thought, okay, maybe I'll try the healthy way. So, <laughs> mm -hmm. traditional Mao, you know what? So after I found out that you're, um, um, you're Maori, you're from the Maori culture, I did look it up and like, there was so much to look up because um, 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 you're, you belong, you're part of um, Polynesia and there are so many cultures, it's so vast. And then I got carried away looking up the culture. There's actually a Polynesian society to sort of um, describe every single culture. So, okay, I'm gonna, now that you gave me a dish to focus on, the Maori hanging, then I'm going to check it out. Thanks for doing that because I've never um, um, had the chance to try um, indigenous food and um, and on this show we're all about um, making foods from all kinds of cultures so um, I want to be the first to do that <laughs> that's awesome Maori hangy okay okay yes and um, I'm gonna send you a whisper when we feature on the show that'll be fun yeah I hope I can find all the ingredients um, but I have, I have no idea until I see the recipe but yeah all right. Okay. My first bite of this baked schnitzel, not fried, <laughs> the healthy way. Okay. It's good. It tastes just like schnitzel, except there's no grease. <laughs> it's good. I'm going to like, I mean with grease, because usually when I fry schnitzel, I add butter and olive oil and butter tastes really good. <laughs> so we're missing the taste of butter. I suppose in the future I could put dots of butter on, um, on the meat be before it goes in the oven to get that butter taste. <laughs> I can actually use the Indian butter that my husband bought, which is ghee it's clarified butter it's supposed to be healthy it's like all the good stuff it's just made of ingredients say butter milk fat it's just the good stuff um perhaps i can do that then there will be more of a you know butter taste you know you need a bit of that butter you know that grease <laughs> maybe have healthy grease rather than um yeah like oil so but it's very good. Let me squeeze some lemon on it. <laughs> yeah, Gaily Gal. Um, just check on Kijiji. I, I mean, I think 80 is hefty still for something used. Um, like, I previously bought a food processor on Kijiji for $20. Like, because it's used. Like, what if it was, what if there was something wrong with it? And that's why the person posted it. Um, you don't know. <laughs> so 80 was a bit, you know, kind of a risk. Because if it's, if it's broken, like, if it doesn't work or, I don't know, the, the heatings, the heat settings don't work properly. It turns on, but you can't get the right temperature. Then, then that's sort of, that's $80. <laughs> you can do a lot with that. <laughs> I've never tried fruit leather and that's fruit roll up. There's this North American snack called fruit roll up, which is, I think it's fruit leather. It's just this sheet of fruit that's rolled up and you can peel it into strips. And it's supposed to be fun, right? You can, you can dangle it. And, like, <laughs> and it's, I think some of them are perforated with animal shapes. So you can peel out the animals and be like, play with them. So I think fruit roll up is the same thing as fruit leather. Um, yes, parents are hungry. Okay, okay, okay. So I'm, I'm getting another bite of the schnitzel. I should try Mr. Cook for Fun's schnitzel, but okay, I'll eat this because I put lemon on it. There was a reason for this. Huh. 
Hmm. So, um, we haven't tried. Hang on, I'm gonna get my knife. We haven't tried any seasoning. Um, it's our first time, but that sounds interesting. So, in Taiwan, there's this seasoning I picked up called pl um, plum powder, and it's used on all kinds of fruits and it just pairs so well with fruits. So plum powder, I guess it would have a sour taste to it. And I can imagine seasoning the fruit before dehydrating it being really, really tasty. Yeah. Okay, I'm trying the keto version. So this is schnitzel that's been coated with coconut, almond, egg, and flaxseed meal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. I'll just go for it. <laughs> hmm. It's good. <laughs> It's different from schnitzel because schnitzel is breaded. Um, I mean, a lot of fried things are breaded. Your fried chicken is breaded, but this is coated with coconut. So there's a strong coconut taste. It's sweet. It's good. It's it's different. It's it's definitely really really good. Um, I wouldn't want to compare it with schnitzel because the whole outer layer is. Uh, a fruit instead of bread crumbs, so it's good. Um, you have to like coconut to like this because there's a strong coconut taste that or flavor that comes out. The flaxseed meal, yeah, I would say that's strong too. Strong grainy taste, so your bread doesn't have a grainy taste to it. It's just pretty neutral. It's just bread, but you know the flaxseed. Is a, is a grain. It's definitely tastes like a grain. The coconut tastes like coconut. So the taste is strong. Um, yeah. So if I were to eat the keto one, I would keep it plain. I wouldn't really use too many sauces. Whereas with the breaded one, um, yeah, add lots of lime, a lemon to it. You can dip it in barbecue sauce, just like when you have your your fried chicken. <laughs> yeah. I believe chicken wings in North America are deep fried first and then they're coated with a barbecue sauce. So, um, and I think, I think they're battered as well. And the batter tends to be, um, I don't know, floury or like breadcrumbs. So yeah. Yeah. So let me try another one and see if just, See if I changed my mind. <laughs> it's good. It definitely has that exotic taste because of the coconut coming out. Mm hmm. And, um, it's sweet as well. I feel like there's more flavors going on. There's the pork flavor, there's a flaxseed meal, there's a coconut. It's very, very good. With the uh, schnitzel, it's more about texture, the breadedness, the breadcrumbs. Um, give it a, a neutral coating, like a crispy coating. And so, I like them both. Um, yeah, I like them both. Um, I feel like the keto one isn't one that I would eat a lot of. I would want a, f a few pieces of those um, because the taste is stronger. There's just stronger coconut taste to it. Whereas the schnitzel, I can eat more and more and more of it because the taste is easier, like it's lighter. Yeah, a little butter glaze on the meat. That's a good idea. Hey, SP Freely, how's it going? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
I know that you came on a while ago. I just sort of fell behind in the chat. Yeah, so I'm going to I'm gonna reply to you and then we're going to feed my parents. Oh, thank you so much for the cheer. It's a great Jenny. <laughs> great to see you again. <laughs> Oh, okay, Hagni, Hagni, right? Ha, Hagni, okay, ha cool, okay. Okay, I'll probably have to listen to that before I stream and practice it before I stream. But let me know if I'm doing it wrong. Um, Hagni, right? Okay. Mm hmm. Hagni, like a, like an emphasis, like um, uh, like a, a long vowel, like a as a long vowel, yeah. Fruit roll ups, <laughs> yeah. But I just imagine um, making a mess. Like, what if it just stays in liquid form and it's just all sticky? Is so all like I, I'll watch it on YouTube, watch someone demonstrate it to see for myself that. It turns into solid. Yes, parents are starving. Okay, I'll keep it. Uh, yeah, I'll I'll have to um, reach the end soon. Mm -hmm. Food tastes better when you start. Dang, I only noticed. Yes, my blue jays top. <laughs> yes, <laughs> it was ordered as part of my. Um, stepfather's family reunion. So we all had this shirt. It was pretty neat. <laughs> like the, ugh. how does he like the diet? Is there any difference so far? Um, he's going to say he has more energy. Um, it's only been a week. So, and then he, when we went to the reunion, he had to eat my, my stepfather's, no, his stepfather's uh, famous homemade bread. It is so good, his bread. <laughs> he had to eat it and, and the croissants. and <laughs> So he had to break it. And then yesterday he had a Jamaican beef patty. He cooked too. Because um, I asked him if he can help put some on the stove because I was hungry. And then he, um, I, don't, I normally just eat once, but he put two. And I asked him if he's eating the other one. He said no. He just assumed that I would eat two. And then I said, okay. Um, I don't want to leave it there and eat it tomorrow. So I called my, I asked him if for sure if he wanted to eat that other patty. He said, no. I said, okay, I'm going to ask, I'm going to phone my dad and ask him to, if he wants to come over and eat that. <laughs> and, um, and then uh, when I checked again, <laughs> half of it was gone. He had eaten it. I said, oh, I can't offer it to, like, uh, so i gave my dad some like frozen ones to bring back but uh, <laughs> um yeah so he broke his his pattern he ate a jamaican beef patty and there's carb in that <laughs> um, but i'll feed back to you to see if he's experienced differences <laughs> yeah So fruit roll up. So before you make fruit roll up, it's actually like this fruit gravy. It's a liquid. And then you're supposed to pour it onto parchment paper or wax paper, put it into the food dehydrator. And then like all the, it dries up and the liquid turns into your fruit leather. That's what, that's how it's made. Your fruit roll is actually liquid. So I wouldn't want, um, there be a problem in my ratio of, of ingredients such that it can't dry properly. Uh, I'm sure it will dry eventually if I keep it in the dehydrator forever. Um, but I don't know, just something about turning liquid into solid. I've never done that. So I'm a bit nervous about that. <laughs> That's right. True. You can pour the fruit roll up juice all over French. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And for this keto diet, Mr. Cook for Fun, he can't have sugar. Like he can't have, he bought coconut sugar. He bought um, like substitute sugars. <laughs> uh, there's this other one that starts with an S and 
So he can't have ice cream, and he loves ice cream. <laughs> Puree, okay. Why did I forget that word, fruit gravy? <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna, I'm going to have to <laughs> feed my parents very shortly. But let me end it off by showing you some of the cherries that we picked yesterday. So I'll get it from our fridge. Okay, now they're in this bag. It was in a colander, but then we needed it for the stream. So I had to empty the colander out into the bag. Okay. All these cherries, and we th we had to sort them. There were a lot that had holes in it and bruises and stuff, and we just wanted um, to make sure there's no like worms hiding in any of them. <laughs> yeah, so these are cherries. They're pretty tart. Um, they're not ripe yet, but we started picking them because they'll they'll ripen on its own, and and we have a lot to harvest, so. We'll start harvesting them, start giving them away so that we're not in a mad rush once they all ripen. So. so I'd like to give you all some cherries <laughs> and wish you a wonderful weekend and week ahead. And I look forward to streaming um, again next week. I, I wanted to make California rolls, like sushi. Yeah, I haven't made that in maybe like several years. <laughs> but it, that depends on whether my avocados are ripe. So if not, <laughs> I'll make something else. And I'm going to look up um, um, hangni, that um, Maori dish, and uh, barbacoa. Um, Yes, and some Slovenian dishes because we have a new viewer who really wants that uh, something from um, that country to be featured. Yeah, so keep your requests coming. Um, stay social with me on Twitter. Um, if you hit exclamation mark social, the social media, different social media platforms will come up. Twitter. I think Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. YouTube isn't that interesting. I just sort of export the videos over there. Uh, Facebook isn't that interesting either. It's more Twitter that's a bit more active. So do that. And um, keep the ideas coming. And every time I feature your request, I send you a whisper to let you know. So hopefully you can join. Yeah. New Zealand deep fried Moro bars and deep fried ice. Yum. That's a technique. You have to have your your ice cream super super cold um, before you before you fry it. Otherwise, it will just melt. <laughs> so that you can quickly get the the batter around it um, fried and um, solidified, so that the ice cream inside doesn't come out. Yeah, we do have uh, a cherry tree. Maybe I'll post a picture shortly on Twitter. Yeah, it's pretty neat. And outside the, uh, the guest room, we can see all the, the cherries. It's quite nice. Yeah, sushi. Yeah, California rolls. Yeah, I haven't made that in so many years. Slovenia. Yeah, one of our viewers is from there. Zortex is from there. Shrimp and chorizo tacos. Okay, I can probably do that. Chorizo, okay. I'll probably do a chorizo seasoned pork hash rather than sausage. Yeah, that's sort of like, if you can't make sausage, I think you can get the flavor and the taste by making a ground, a ground pork hash with the same sausage, sausage ingredients. So it's not bounded tightly, but I think you can get the flavor. So I'll try that, a, a chorizo um, seasoned or a um, chorizo's, yeah, chorizo seasoned pork hash. Yeah, that would mean some more salsa. We always put, we always put lots of salsa on our tacos. Mm. Pico de gallo, that's it, pico de gallo. All right, so we're gonna, it's two o'clock Eastern Standard Time, so I think parents are very anxious, so I shall 
bid farewell, but uh, stay in touch and see you next week. <laughs> yeah, combining pre-made sausage with new ingredients and still cook it up. Yeah, I can do that. All right, see you next time. Love you all. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Whoopi Hound. <laughs> Thanks for your comment, too. Yeah, earlier about to the other viewer. Okay, take care. <laughs>